Hey, welcome to another BPMN learning video. For today's video, I'm going to do a little something different as today I'm going to focus on a peer review of a user submitted model. Peer review is important to learning and model development. I'll do so with a model that was provided and describe an alternative modeling approach and how you can think through typical modeling problems, some that you may or may not have experienced before. So the purpose of today's peer review, I'm gonna specifically focus on how to apply event-based gateways in collaboration with a black box pool. So let's dive in. On the screen, I'm sharing the user submitted model from Andrew. In the model, he is describing the process for ordering groceries online and the delivery of those groceries. For context purposes, Andrew indicated that he is learning BPMN and hasn't tried modeling in his organization yet. And Andrew asked, is there a better way to model my process? So I'm gonna switch over now to the model that I recreated for this video and discuss an alternative way to model this process while sharing some key details on how you can improve your process model design. To begin with, I added a message flow or, or several message flows to cl clearly depict the collaboration between the process and the black box process. Since this is a larger model, let's zoom in a bit and I'm going to walk through the model using Trisotech's process animation feature. And the second thing I did, as, you, as you'll notice, is I removed all the extra start events. I did so because as I looked at the structure of the model, I was able to determine that the events described would fit neatly after event-based gateways or as a boundary event. Before we dive into the event-based gateways, let's discuss gateways in general. Gateways are either data-driven or event-driven. In the example provided by Andrew, he used an exclusive gateway. The exclusive gateway is data-driven, meaning that during the execution of the activity, order groceries, an examination of the data reveals that the order is used to determine which path we take. However, we don't know if there are any issues with the order. I mean, how many times have you ordered something online because it said it was available only to get a message later stating it was no longer available? And this is a great example of how an event-driven gateway can be applied to your model. But first, I want to share my event-based gateway cheat sheet. And I will leave a link in the description below so you can reuse this as a quick reference. I won't go through all of the rules here for event-based gateways as I cover this in another video. But one thing I want to focus on is the event determines which steps you take next. And this is why I chose to use event-based gateways here. When the customer receives a message from the shopper on their phone, indicating that there's a missing item that, that has been discovered, it signifies that something has occurred and that path is taken. The customer would then have to confirm they accept the replacement item, if one is available. As we continue in our process, I added a second event-based gateway to account for events that occur when the shopper attempts to replace an item. In this case, our replacement item is also missing, but the difference here is when that missing item occurs, the sequence flow loops back to the previous confirm item replacement activity. I do this because it provides a cleaner look than duplicating activities. This is the power of event-based gateways. As you can see on the screen, we get back to the second event-based gateway, and if the shopping is complete, that event occurs, we're able to merge our process flow using the exclusive gateway. Now let's examine the next event-based gateway. Just like in the previous example, I could see that invalid credit card processing notification is also event-driven. For me, it was simple, as in the first example, the, the user used the start event to indicate something occurs to start that process. But instead of using the start event, we replace it with an intermediate event after the event-based gateway. And now when the update credit card notification is required, that path the token will transverse and we can now update the credit card given that payment process is not instant because they're checking out 
I created a loop back to account for more than one possible update to the credit card information. And so the sequence flow will go back to updating the credit card information similar to our previous example. Okay, let's run through this again, but look at the third area we can apply event-based gateways. In the user model, a conditional start was used followed by the activity cancel order. There was a problem with the way this was depicted. The main process flow would have never been completed as there would have been an active token in that main process. Sure, we could have added a terminate event after the cancel order, but let's discuss the alternative approach. As I looked at this, I, I saw how you could update the model and apply this as part of the event-based gateway design that we have been describing. I also changed the event to a timer event, an intermediate timer event, and labeled it 24 hours. By doing this, it enables me to show the power of event-based gateways. If neither of the two events occur, at 24 hours, that event is triggered and the customer will then go and cancel the order. Okay, so let's run through this one last time. And so I'm gonna just move the process flow along saying it's the happy day. And when we get to the next change, similar to the cancel order activity, the user had an additional start event, non-interrupting that indicated when there was a missing or damaged item, he contacts customer service. I saw this as a way to apply a non-interrupting boundary event an intermediate one to the receive order activity. So when this condition is true, an exception flow is created and the customer can contact customer service while continuing the main process flow to determine whether they want to tip or not to tip the shopper. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and I will see you in the next one.